flavor, the flavor of Tampa Bay. Savor the flavor, the flavor of Tampa Bay. Savor the flavor, the flavor of Tampa Bay. What's in style, what's ornate, hear what's great on the plate. Savor the flavor, the flavor of Tampa Bay. Where to go, what's the scene, where's the greatest cuisine. Savor the flavor, the flavor of Tampa Bay. I'm here at Council Oak with Chef Mike. Chef Mike, good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon, it's good to see you. Very well. Now, tell everybody what sets your guys' meat apart from everybody else's meat in the Bay Area. We dry age everything in house. As you can see behind us, we have everything going. It comes in 21, 28 days. Our lamb, though, 14 days. So we have special cuts of meat that we always have here. And then the lamb, no one else has lamb dry aged in the area. From what I know, at least, you know. So as you can see here, we had the lamb. This is the whole saddle itself, mm -hmm. right off the backbone, right down the middle here. Mm -hmm. You see it, we have these tags on them right here. The tags have the data comes in, how long it's been aged for, okay. so we can tell when it's ready, when it hits those 14 days. Every piece of meat kind of has that little darkness on it, that's the age, that all gets cut off. Okay. So once you get it all cut off, you get to this piece here. So this is just this, cut in half and Frenched. So we're gonna actually have you cut one of these later on today. Awesome. And uh, as you see throughout the board here, we have strip going here, mm -hmm. the short one here, get your steak, your strip steak here, mm -hmm. and then your flays over here. So from this one piece here, we get all these cuts right here. We got the porterhouse, bone and strip, filet, and it's a regular one strip right there without the bone on it. Now the lamb is aged for 14 days, Correct. and the steak is aged for how long? 21, 28, depending on where we're going with it. And how does that change the flavor, the amount of time you age it? As you age it, all the water, all the extra water kind of goes away, mm -hmm. and it compresses all the flavors together. So you get, not, you get a nice solid piece of meat. And when you cook it, it doesn't lose all that water weight. So you get what you paid for. You get all that just beef, nutty flavor. Delicious, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, you're gonna teach me here how to fillet them or butterfly them. How to, what are they, what's, the, what's the verbiage? We're just gonna cut chops. Okay. When you butterfly, say you have a lamb chop mm -hmm. and you have something like this right here. The butterfly will be to cut that in half. Okay. Or to split it open like Okay, a I get it, yep. And with lamb, you can also lollipop them, which is a, a single chop. Okay. But here at Council Oak, we do a double chop. So what we're gonna do, we're having Take your weapon. Okay. We're gonna have you take the lamb chop here. We'll do the two bone cut. What you wanna do is grab two bones mm -hmm. and then just cut down. So out of every lamb rack, we only get one, two, three, four cuts. Okay. And every customer gets four pieces. So for one lamb rack, you only feed two people. That's a big serving. It's a nice size serving. That's a big serving. And for lamb, it's a pretty big serving of lamb, too. So we'll have you glove up and we'll cut it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, I actually have a salt block that I put on my big green egg and I cook things on. Yeah. This is something else, isn't it? What, what is this? Exactly? It's uh, pink Himalayan sea salt. As you see in the back of the butcher shop, the whole back wall is lined with pink Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. We change it out every about two years, but what it does is it reduces the moisture in the room, okay. and they say as the air flows through it, the minerals from the salt actually go into the meat. Can't prove it, wow. but it's one of those flavors that you can't mm -hmm. tell, sure. and it's one of those systems that no one else does, too. Well, you can you taste it, though. Yeah, you, you can taste can, it. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's one of those things. So. It's part of the greatness. It's that thing. Absolutely. That thing you don't know. You yeah. know? Talk, to me, talk to me through this a little bit. This is the beginning product, okay? Correct. What does this weigh? This weighs right here about 51 to 60 pounds. Okay. And when you break it down, obviously you have experts breaking it down. Mm -hmm. How much meat comes out of this? As you see right here, if you see this line here, mm -hmm. all of that come off, comes off. And then afterwards, you're looking at about 20 to 30 pounds of meat to use. And then once you trim it all off, most of it's bone. So afterwards, you only get about seven steaks out of one piece. Seven steaks? Seven out of steaks. this whole thing? Out of all. 50 pounds of meat. That's crazy. Seven 26 ounce steaks. So, and as you see here, we have veal as well. So this is of the baby version mm -hmm. of ribeye. Beautiful. So this is how it starts. Mm -hmm. When it grows to a full mature cow, you get this right here. So, but you can see the color difference too between sure. prime sure. beef and prime veal. Now you can't get beef that looks like that in the supermarket. No way. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, <laughs> exactly. Good luck. But we do sell it out here, too. So you we, sell, so we have this awesome too? workshop. We sell all of our steaks to the customer. So if you're a Tampa Bay resident, you yeah. want to come in, buy some of our ribeyes, porterhouses, bone-in strips, bone-in filets, just regular filet mignon, yeah. we'll sell it to you. Well, you see, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I'm always buying bone-in ribeyes or looking for bone-in ribeyes. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. And we, we have them every day, seven days a week. We open wow. at 5 o'clock, so. That's the place to get it right there. Mm -hmm. Nothing better than that. Yep, and you know, we'll wrap it up in our butcher paper, send it home with you. Beautiful. Welcome back to Flavor of Tampa Bay. I'm here with Chef Mike. 
And uh, this is where all the magic happens, right here. Now, Chef Mike, tell us a little bit about your, your culinary background. Um, I graduated culinary school in 2006, and I had the chance to work with Bobby Flay, open up his first steakhouse. Wow. Bobby Flay Steak in Lang City. I was there for eight years, and then I got scooped up by Wolfgang Funk for a year and a half, and then I helped Mark Giorgio and opened his new hot steakhouse called American Cut uh -huh. in New York City. So I was there for my last two, and I came down here about eight months ago. The good old Seminole Hard Rock. Sure. Those are some big names there, brother. It's nice to have those names on your belt. No you know? doubt about it. It taught me a lot. Okay. Yeah. So now teach me how to do this now. Sure. I know a little bit about cooking, a little bit. Now, this is the, the, the cut that I cut earlier, and just simple salt and pepper, salt that's pepper, it? That's all we do here. All right. Let me know if I'm doing this right. You can't ever put too much on it. It will fall off as you cook. Correct. So. Is that enough there? That's good, yeah. A little pepper? A little pepper. Turn it over, you can do always on both sides. Right away? Yeah, right away. Okay. And that's why we season pretty heavy, because it tends to fall off. Understand. And the steak's so thick, if you don't put enough seasoning on the outside, by the time you get to the inside, it's all you taste is just red meat. Yep. All right. So you go from there right to the grill. Right, right on the flat grill right there. You hear a nice sizzle. Yep. Grab the lamb real quick. Same thing. Lamb, no, lamb's small. You don't need as much salt. Don't need as much. Yeah. It's like you're seasoning like a hamburger at home now. Okay. There we go. Now we go through the flat top first. Yes. Why? That's always the question. Why do we have a flat top? Sear it up. Sear it up. So we sear both sides and mm -hmm. we lock in all the juices before we get to the grill. Okay. But also, if you ever had a steak that has that nice crunch on it, yes, absolutely. it gives the crust to it. And that's where that's, that's the, the secret. Key. That's the secret. That's the key. No one can really tell what we're doing over here when we're when we're on the, when we're serving people. Mm -hmm. So we get this crust going, we put it on here and we go from there. Yeah. And that's pretty much that's all we really do. Treat it simple, it's good meat. So we don't have to do any fancy rubs yeah. or marinades or anything. It's just let it go, let it sit there, let it cook. Don't touch it. That's a big thing. People like to turn, turn, turn. Mm -hmm. Let it go. You you know it's done. Like got five minutes on the big boy mm -hmm. and about two on the lamb. And it comes off easy when it's ready to go, yeah. right? It's so hot that, that that thing runs about 500 degrees right there. Okay. And this runs about 800. Really? So that's what, this is this is uh, the the business, so to say. Okay. And that just puts a crust on it. Now, I'm, I'm curious, I have a big green egg and I get it to 700, yeah. and it, I do the crusting on that. Mm -hmm. The 800 is not enough for the crust, or it just gives a better crust on this? The thing is, it's a flat. So you get flat heat to okay. the whole piece of meat. Sure. The grill, you'll, you'll get the grill marks, and if, the, if it's hot enough and the flames come up through the grill marks, okay. then you get the crust. But then you got to watch it a lot easier. Sure. So this is a, it guarantees the crust to every okay. customer we have. Perfect. So, we can turn, probably turn them out if you want. Okay. Go bare handle on it? Yeah, why not? I'm old school. Go. Look at that. Gorgeous. And that's the key right there, uh -huh. getting that nice crust. If somebody gives me a steak, does have a nice crust. Uh, and the it's... big thing is, too, all this fat, that's all the flavor, too. Yeah. So what we're doing here, we're also rendering out the fat. You put that on your grill at home, at 700 degrees, yeah. you're going to have a flame up to here. Sure. And then what's going to happen? You're going to taste the flame, you're going to taste the fire. This guarantees that it goes down, and then you get all meat there. It's pure, dry aged, fine nice. beef. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it's been about five minutes now. There should be a nice crust, a beautiful crust on this side. Yes, sir. Then you move it over here. Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. The whole grill is the same temperature. The whole grill. It's a little bit lower on this side. So okay. You, you want it to go hot, hot. Okay. And kind of as you're getting close to the temperature you want, you move it, it over. down a little bit. Yeah. So when you have obviously on a, on a busy Saturday, you have a bunch of meat and you're kind of shifting meat around. As you go, we have all of our tickets laid out here, and we kind of go buy tickets. Okay. So it'll be ticket one, two, and have uh -huh. all their tickets for each one. We come down and we put it over there to rest. Okay. So the whole point is to get it, keep them together, so you don't lose people's tables. Now, are you, are you a touch guy? I'm all touch. All touch. I, that's how I was trained. If, if you had a thermometer at uh, a place. Yeah. Teach me. I'm trying to learn that. I'm, I'm a phenomenal I'm a thermometer guy. Teach okay. me. The biggest thing, right now they're too cold to go that way. Okay. The best way I can explain to you is you feel here. Good. That feel. Good. mid rip Medium rip. Yep. Okay. Right here. Medium. Okay. <laughs> right here. Oh. Medium well. Oh boy. It, it sounds crazy. Okay. But if you if you get those things, it's nice, red and juicy. Okay. A little bit tighter. Not much tighter. Okay. A little bit tighter than here. Uh huh. And then the will is pretty pretty okay. firm, but still has some some give to it. I'm gonna look crazy at home doing this and then but, touching the steak. Well, when you get to it and you go, you it kind of makes sense as you go. You okay. Know? Not that I have guys on the grill going, uh, you know, sure, but it's absolutely. one of those things where. Okay, it's tight, you know. Sure. Some people have all different ways to do it. You hold your hand tight, do this tight, you know what sure. I mean? But that's the best way that I can teach anybody to go. Awesome. So, How long does it take normally for the steak? That steak will take you about 15, 20 minutes to get okay. to prepare. And the lamb chops look a little less? Lamb fast. Lamb fast. Under 10. Okay. You know I mean? so, Perfect. As you can see, how, how the lamb's smoking up because of all the fat. Yeah, work. absolutely. If we turn it over right now, mm -hmm. you already have a grill bar oh. and it's also burnt. Look at that love there. Yep. Now, this is my favorite part of the whole show. 
and this is the reason why I'm here, because it's beef, and the lamb here is it's second to none. And as you can see, Chef Mike did it up right, and had one of the chefs engrave a little uh, note on our bone right there. If you're very nice to them, they'll do that for your flavor of Tampa Bay. That's a lot of love. So plate that up. Let's get this sure, thing going. Sure. Let's get it going. We got our lamb here. Lamb's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Hot. Medium rare. Medium rare. And then we do a little bit of the old school classic mint for garnish to give a little color on the plate. Okay. And then we'll take the ribeye. Very nice. Very nice. nice. And then you Thank can't you. forget the greens in this too. No doubt. Cool. You guys make your own steak sauce, don't you? We do. Council Oak makes your own steak sauce. Council Oak steak sauce. We, actually, we make it in a bottle too. So you can take it home with you too. I'm taking the bottle home. There you go. Now as you can see, the crust is absolutely fabulous. This long bone ribeye right there. Medium rare. Mm. You salted it just right. It's, it's funny, like, all that sauce, mm -hmm. but right now, you get mm. it, it's just kind of just enough, you know? Definitely, that's beautiful. That's the best cut to me. I revise, revise for veal, yeah. lamb, and beef here. Yeah. The With the bone sauce. in it, though. More Got flavor. It. More flavor. Perfect. Now, the lamb. Where's the lamb from again? Colorado. Colorado. You can't beat the domestic lamb. No doubt. Look at that. I mean, that's cooked perfectly right there. Look at that. I'm going to say the lamb's probably better. Oh, my God. <laughs> the lamb is fantastic. That's the most tender. You can't, you can't get lamb like that anywhere else in the country. Dude, I love lamb. Unless you're in Colorado. <laughs> I've had that before. I've not had that. Yeah. They're both outstanding. Yeah. That lab is crazy. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, brother. Thanks, sir. You're doing good things, man. Welcome. Yep. How's the look, everybody? You can't miss here. This place is absolutely beautiful. Y'all come check it out. Savor the flavor. The flavor of Tampa Bay. The flavor of Tampa Bay.